Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to GSL English. My name is Gideon, and I want to ask you one question. Do you want to speak perfect English? Well, if you answered yes to that question, I'm going to be honest with you. It's not going to happen. So, as always, it's my pleasure to welcome you back to our class today. Now, you're probably thinking, what on earth do you mean, Gideon? It's not going to happen. I study all the time. I'm practicing and I'm doing my best to learn English. And you're telling me it's never going to be perfect. Yeah, that is basically what I'm saying. You will never speak perfect English. But in this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly why, but also why this is a good thing for us. So firstly, let's take the big question, the elephant in the room. Why? Why won't I ever speak perfect English? Well, the answer is this. Because perfect English doesn't exist. As much as people like to say that a certain type of English is perfect, or somebody might say this person speaks perfect English, it's not true. Nobody speaks perfect English because it doesn't exist. So let me explain to you why. If we think about the English language, there are so many different accents, so many different forms of the language, aren't there? For example, it is estimated by research that there are over 40 different accents in Britain alone, over 40 different British accents. And we're only a small little island. Would we consider any of those to be wrong? Would we consider one to be the perfect English? No. This is what makes the English language amazing. There's different forms of the language. And then we have American English, Canadian, Australian, New Zealand, and that list goes on and on. But we wouldn't consider one of them to be perfect. That wouldn't be fair. We all have different vocabulary that we use, different expressions that we use according to where we are from. For example, I'm down south, just outside of London. We have certain expressions that we like to use. But you go up north to Manchester, maybe five hours away, they use different vocabulary, different expressions. But neither of those would be considered wrong, or one wouldn't be considered the perfect English. They're just different. And also, if we think about the English language, it is constantly changing. It is adapting. We sometimes describe the English language as being dynamic. It's always moving. Particularly as time goes on, the language changes. So what might be considered perfection at one time, a year later, is no longer perfect. So if we were always trying to speak perfect English, we'd have to keep up with every single change that was always happening, and that would be impossible. And another reason why perfect English doesn't exist is because nobody speaks it. There is nobody out there that speaks English. Every single word they say, every single sentence structure is absolutely perfect 100% of the time. Because that is what perfection is. It means there are no mistakes. There are no flaws. There is nobody out there that can do that. So, Perfect English doesn't exist. That is why it's never going to happen for you, for me, for everybody. But honestly, this is a great thing. This is good news. Why? Well, it's very true that we have different levels of the English language. You know, you're at your own personal level right now. It might be beginner, intermediate, advanced, and we gradually progress, don't we? As we learn English, we, we improve and we go through the levels. But one of those levels that we reach is not perfection. So we take that out of the question. We take the idea of perfect English and I want you to just throw it away. Get it out of your mind and just 
breathe. Now that we know we don't have to reach or we're not going to reach perfection, it's almost like a weight has been lifted from our shoulders. That's not our goal anymore. We don't have to worry about perfection. We just have to worry about improving and reaching fluency. That is our focus. Another reason why this is great for us is because if we are focusing on perfect English all the time, it takes all of the emotion out of it. It takes all of that natural communication away because we're just focusing on perfection. And that really is not what we want when it comes to communicating with other humans. We're not robots. We want our emotion to come out. For example, if I meet my mates down the pub for a pint, we don't greet each other with perfect robotic greetings. We just say, hello, mate, how's it going? We give them a hug. Now, the grammar that we use is not perfect. The pronunciation is different, but it's emotional. We express emotion when we are speaking and we let that natural English flow. And that is what we want with communication. We just want to naturally and freely express ourselves. We're not interested in perfection. So I really want you to try this over the next week, month and year is don't necessarily focus on perfect English. Well, you can't because it doesn't exist, but focus just on expressing yourself with emotion. Because if somebody's trying to speak perfect English, you'll often hear that they speak in a monotone and their English is very boring. It might be considered perfect grammatically, but you don't want to listen to them. So I want you to focus on that. Focus on letting your emotions come out. Let your personality come out when you're speaking English. And by doing this, I guarantee you'll make some mistakes. Your pronunciation isn't going to be perfect, but you're communicating. And that is what we want. So let yourself speak naturally. Speak English the way that you naturally would. And often when we are just focused on perfection, there's a few outcomes. The first is that we're scared to speak in English. The second is, and I tell all of my students not to do this, is that every time we make a mistake, we apologize because it's not perfect. And thirdly, sometimes when we focus on perfection too much, we don't speak at all because we don't want to make mistakes. Well, I want you to change that thinking. I want you to make mistakes. I want you to think of mistakes as a good thing. Mistakes are a key part of learning English. They are a key part of improving. When we make a mistake, it highlights an area that we need to work on. Or we might mispronounce a word. And we think, oh, I need to change the pronunciation of that. Or maybe someone else makes us aware. But also, when we're not worried about making mistakes, we're more keen to try using new vocabulary. We're up for trying new expressions. Okay, we might use them a little bit in the wrong context or not quite right, but we're giving it a go. And the more we do this, you will see that your vocabulary just develops. And as you're speaking emotionally and naturally, you'll realize that you start to use vocabulary that you looked at months ago. But now it's coming out because you're not scared of making a mistake. And that leads us nicely into our next point of why perfection not existing is a good thing for us. And that is, it means we can enjoy it. We can enjoy learning English. I'd like to give you an example. I tried playing golf for a while. And when I first started, I loved it because I knew that I wasn't that good but I just slowly improved. I enjoyed it. I wasn't focused on anything being perfect. I just enjoyed the sport. I enjoyed going out on the golf course and giving it a go. But as I started to get a bit better, I started to take it more seriously. I started to focus on perfection. I started to focus on the perfect golf swing, the perfect score. And I'll be honest with you, it took all enjoyment out of the sport. So I stripped back just to enjoying it and then my golf started improving again. I think it's kind of the same with the English language. We want to enjoy the process. We want to enjoy improving. We want to enjoy using the language. But if we just focus on perfection, 
it takes that enjoyment away from it. But now we don't need to because we know that perfection doesn't exist. So rather than sitting down and studying what is considered or what somebody has told us to be perfect English, we study what we enjoy. We find a way of studying that we just like and we want to do. We find movies in English that we want to watch. We read a book in English that we want to read. We read pot. We listen to podcasts that we like and so on. And by doing this, we just enjoy the process. And I promise you, if you enjoy it, you will improve so much quicker. Your improvement will be drastically different to then forcing yourself to sit down and study with the goal of perfection. Just enjoy it. You have to enjoy it. It's essential. So this week, throughout your study and as you go to learn English, focus on enjoying it. But also, I would love to know in the comments, what helps you to enjoy English? What helps you to improve and just enjoy and like the process? So that's just some thoughts that I wanted to share with you because so many people have this idea that they need to speak perfect English. You don't. You just need to improve your fluency. And what we want is to be able to express our opinions and thoughts in a genuine way, with emotion, with feeling and in a natural way. We don't want our English to be forced. So I want you to focus on that. Focus on just being able to let your emotion out. Let your personality come out when you speak English. Don't focus on trying to sound like someone else or a particular actor. But study pronunciation, study vocabulary, and develop your own form, your own use of the English language, because we are all different. My accent is different to my friends, my families. Your accent will be different, but that's absolutely fine. But just saying all of this, we want to keep on improving. So be progressive, be consistent, and forget about perfection. It doesn't exist. So if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more English content, and I'll see you all very soon. Have a good one, guys.